So you you did a thing. I did a thing. I got last I got, week. I got married. Yes, you 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 went you went to this place. I went to Hawaii, and I came back. You went I, to Hawaii. You got married in Hawaii. It was so great. And the only, like, seriously, I was trying the whole week to talk Dan into just like, let's just stay here and run a taco truck on the beach. Let's just not go home. And then then he, he kindly reminded you you had cats. He was like, we have cats and I kind of have a PhD to pay off. So we should probably go home. And I was like, Ugh, fine. But it was really great. Like, it was 80 degrees and sunny every day. Honestly, the cats would have been fine. They would have eventually forced their way out and killed someone and fed themselves. The resort has, like, all these cats that just kind of live there and bum food off the tourists. So, of course, we were beloved of the cats because we were like, here, have some chicken. (laughs) But the resort kind of is embraced it and, like, takes them and gets their shots and everything and makes sure they're, they're healthy. So they're pretty friendly because they're used to people. Well, yeah, you know, if they were like little fucking plague carriers, I think the resort would be a lot less. Right. It's so kind it, of in their interest. It's in their self-interest to make sure these cats are not carrying rabies or anything. But um. although that sounds like a great horror movie right there. <laughs> resort cats from hell. Yes. There we go. So yeah, we, we got married on the beach at sunset and it was lovely. And uh, we went horseback riding and we did a tour of all the places they shot Lost. I saw both of Hurley's houses. I saw the church where they all go into the light. I saw the big banyan tree where like Walt hides from the polar bear. You saw all the, uh, the, the, the big pile where they dropped all the abandoned plot threads. They didn't abandon any plot. You, you could, yeah, Terry, you tell like, tell yourself that. It's okay. It's okay, right, Grady? It's what? okay. Hey, so. Uh, Grady just does not want to be on the show tonight. Grady's like, no, fuck you, I'm tired. I don't know what you're tired from. You were sleeping in my bed. Well, yeah, that makes you tired. It's hard work sleeping all day, man. Big goofus. He's he is he is just like play doh tonight. Okay, let's not chew off our name tag, okay? Let's not. They've been trying to gnaw off their name tags ever since they got them. Let's not though, okay? Thank you. I I think they don't like them very much. Because you like to run up and greet people that come to the door. And so if you ever get out, you're gonna be glad you have that. No, they're really not. They're, they're just gonna, they're just gonna have a lovely life of murder and mayhem and blood and they, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Peggy, Peggy, it's not coming off, baby. Peggy, she's just up there. So you you all have to forgive me tonight because I am a little sleepy. It, f- f- Today was my first day back at work after a week in Hawaii, so. Oh, oh, really? Oh, really? I've been awake for forever because this work in the vision. I get up and I drank three monsters and that was a very bad plan. Yeah, you probably have it worse. That was the worst plan I've ever had. Why did they let me do this? Are you like exhausted, but also your eyeballs are vibrating? Yes. Baby, stop it. You can't take it off. No, it has to stay. There is no God. <laughs> oh, so. So, with what that, I did last week. Well, well, no, the normal, the usual. It, it was... I think I was actually getting married around the time I would have been on the air because yes. we met the guy at five. We got married about 536 and they're six hours behind. So I think I was actually in the process of getting married while I should have been on the air last week. Well, it's time. Let's do the thing. Where's the intro? Do you want to do the nonsense? Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, 
and all sort of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, well, let's start off with, let's just get this one out of the way. Everyone has been talking about the iPhone 7 and it doesn't have a headphone jack and people don't like that. It could be worse. Yeah, it could be exploding. That's an option. When we Um, got on the plane, both times we got on the plane, part of the pre-flight announcements now are you can use your small electronic devices until we begin takeoff. If you have a Samsung Galaxy Note 7, you may not use it on the plane at any time and you should turn it off now. Yeah, because they're catching fire. Like, they're they're almost ready to just not let it pass the TSA because they're like, no, that's a bomb. That's a little bomb that sends texts. You can't have it. But... The, 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 something happened in France, and I say something because I don't. No one understands really. Let's 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 put up the video here of uh, what happened in France. Um, this guy wandered into the iPhone store and just started doing this. Oh. Every iPhone 7 on display, he took this metal ball and just started smashing them. Now, understand the iPhone 7 is what, six, seven hundred dollars? You're a big Phantasm fan, right? Yeah. Did you go to France this weekend? No. Because you really hate Apple. Yeah, but everyone hates Apple. Um, you should. I'm um, surrounded by a bevy of Apple products. Did, did, because... Yeah, it's a lot of money. That's, every time he slams down that ball on an iPhone, that's, boom, $700, boom, $700, boom, that's, that, that, that little spree there, just smashing those, that, that was at least $10,000, just dis the fuck appeared. Yeah. No one... And he's so calm, like, he's not even mad about it. No one knows why he did this. He's totally calm doing it. He's like, boom, boom, boom. Okay, bye. And and no one's, that's the other thing. No one, everyone was sort of like, what do we do? What do you do? What's, what's, what's the plan here? There's no protocol for that. Fucking Aaron isn't going to come up and. So, hey, no one gets that joke. It's, 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 the article says it's unclear where the incident took place or if he was arrested. Like, the Apple hipsters are not trained for this shit. <clears throat> yeah, th- this isn't, you know, they, they're, they're used to someone coming in going, my interwebs are not working with the emails. Right. Like, they're used <clears throat> to either dumb people or artsy kids or other hipsters. They're, they're not used to the dude. To- <laughs> they're not used to random acts of violence. Well, they're not used to seeing Apple devices just randomly. You're not supposed to do that to the iPhone. I know. How many, how many tiers do you think there were? It's like have a, you seen that, com- that car commercial where they have like a fake focus group and they put all the people's phones in a wood chipper? No. They say, we have to confiscate your phone so you can't record any information. And then they throw them all in a wood chipper. And they ask them all, like, how you doing? And this one girl goes, my chest hurts. And then they reveal that it's a fake and they give them their phones back. But, like... For a phone? Your whole life is in your phone. No, you know what? My whole life is backed up automatically. See, mine isn't right now because my iMac is so old that my phone is not compatible to sync with it. Yeah, but it's, it's, my heart would not stop if my phone got fucked up. I just get a new phone. I told Dan if he, che- if he checked any work email while we were in Hawaii, his phone was going in the ocean. So he told everybody at his job, he was like, don't bother me because she'll do it. She's crazy. My phone will go in the ocean and it's expensive. Well, we have, a, we have another one. Okay. I wish I had that clip of of you played yourself for this next one because that's exactly what happened. Okay. 
Is that DJ Kala? Is that the Silk guy? Yeah. The almond Milk guy? Yeah. You played yourself. Cause... I only know him as the Almond Milk guy. I didn't know he made music. <laughs> the, I'm old. The, there's, uh, obviously, in the illicit community, in, in the illegal activities community, you want to try to discourage people from informing to the authorities. Or, snitches get stitches. Yeah, and I could see where that might be a concern, but this might not be the most covert way going about. The sign reads, Due to snitches, Everyone entering my home is subject to being searched. All cell phones and drinks will be left outside. If you're not a snitch, you will, it won't offend you if I search you. Drinks? A note warning people about snitches led police to discover the owner of the residence was dealing drugs. I mean, was that like on his front door? Deputies for the uh, Sheriff's Department responded to a joyriding complaint. Uh, when the deputies approached the residents, they spotted a bright pink sign posted on the front door warning that everyone entering the home is subject to arrest due to snitches. Here, here's a fun fact. No one has to snitch on you if you do it on yourself. <laughs> if you advertise that you're worried about snitches you don't need to be you're done yeah you have in fact played yourself homeowner april lynn lavender 38 was arrested and charged with felony offense of possession of a controlled substance with intent to deliver <sighs> April Lynn Lavender. That is not a drug dealer name. Well, it's a pot dealer name. Yeah, it's a pot dealer name. I mean, it, it just... It, it's a, like, she'll sell you some pot and a lovely kombucha tea. I, I just... It, you're trying to keep a low profile. This isn't like the fucking break room at Walmart. <laughs> it's neon pink. It's neon... This is, this is like those p passive aggressive post-its gone mad. Yeah. They should send that to that blog. Oh, hi. What are you doing? When your need to be passive aggressive starts encroaching on your need to be covert. To be not incarcerated. Therapy, man. I'm going to tell you, they're not big on passive aggressive notes in prison. From no. what I hear. At least on Orange is the New Black, that would not fly at all. We've got one from Utah that, Christ, I'm scared to even mention the word election. <sighs> but this is not about that election. This is about a different one. And it, it, it's amazing that the bar has not dropped so far. How? That this story is still able to catch my attention. Amazing, but we're not far off from the bar dropping that far. This one comes from Utah, from the Utah governor's race. Utah business businessman says, vote for him or face the judgments of God. Oh. Utah businessman is making an impassioned appeal to voters in hopes of being elected governor. Impassioned appeal. Sure. Super Del Shanzi. What's super about him? Famous for his unusual, totally awesome computer commercials. That's not a description. That's what they're called. Totally awesome computer. I don't know what they're about. Is warning voters if they vote for anyone other than him, they will face the judgments of God. Righteousness can solve every problem. This is from one of his pamphlets. God made a promise, as ye keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. The vast majority in our state are marrying, are, are against murdering unborn children. You are against perversion and perversion of marriage. You are against more encroachment on your Second Amendment rights. 
That's not in the Bible. Yeah, uh, definitely nowhere in the Bible does Jesus advocate guns. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually pretty confident Jesus would be anti-gun. Yeah. The voice of the people in the Constitution are being utterly mocked. Vote Super Del Shanzi or face the judgments of God. Does he know Jesus didn't write the Constitution? I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of people in this country that don't know that Jesus didn't write the Constitution. He didn't. I, Neither did Joseph Smith. Not involved. I just, it, it would seem to me that if you've got to invoke the almighty in order to win an election, he's probably not on your side to begin with because he would have done some shit by now already. I got told on Twitter yesterday that I'm going to burn in hell because I'm not voting for Jill Stein because it means that I am, and this is not my word, a Zionist who is unconcerned that the Palestinians are living in an apartheid state. That yeah. is, that is, okay, try to, to. And that's not even the person that sent me a map of my town with a blast radius around it for a nuke. It was a good day on Twitter yesterday. Oh, yeah, that that's. I just. I'm gonna burn in hell because I'm not voting for Jill Stein. You, but when you're actually you, at least Jill Stein didn't say that. Then, yeah, Jill Stein didn't say that. This she guy is vaccines, but at least she doesn't think she's anointed from on high. This guy is is coming out and saying, "You vote for me, or God's gonna fuck y'all up." Yeah. And God's going, I don't know him. I'm not. I I, I have not endorsed him. Here's the thing. If God is truly behind you, one of two things is going to happen. You're not going to need to invoke his name. No. Or you're going to live a life of tribulation and you're not going to win at anything because that's what you're supposed to do. Like God being with you goes one of two ways. Either you get you you achieve your goal, usually through hardship, or Everything sucks for you until you die horribly. Plus, have you ever noticed what happens to people who God pays attention to? Not good things. Have you, I mean, have you read the Bible? Anyone who God has a chat with, their life is fucked. I mean, your best case scenario is you get knocked up. Noah, Abraham, Job. I mean, anyone who has any kind of contact with God stricken blind they're having a bad day you, you it's sort of like so your best case scenario is you wind up knocked up yeah. you will see horribly murdered by a mob so you know you probably don't want to if you if you don't have his attention by now you probably don't want to get it super yeah. dell don't invite the spotlight yeah super dell what the f super dell is he He's not the kid from the Dell commercials grown up, is he? Oh, I'd hope not. That, that would be kind of amazing, wouldn't I it? Hope not. Oh, we have, okay, whoever's keeping score, pull out the card and put a tick box next to it's not a fucking pocket. God damn it. I'm not even going to lead up to this one. I'm just going to let it speak for itself. Woman with active warrant hides ID in private parts during traffic stop. And it's Florida, Hollywood, Florida. Miami woman was arrested over the weekend in Hollywood after she was riding in a vehicle. It was pulled over in connection with a hit and run. According to the arrest report, police discovered that a passenger in the driver's vehicle, Takara Nodin, 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 28, uh, had an active warrant out of the uh, Broward Sheriff's Office for operating a vehicle without a driver's license. Uh, she was arrested Saturday, taken to the main jail for processing. Police say Nodden told medical staff at the jail she had shoved her Nebraska ID card up her <laughs> vagina during the traffic stop. Which is pointless because they could still identify you by that really 
jacked up Maleficent tattoo on your neck. That is, yeah, that's a, that, I gotta show everybody. Look at that that's tattoo. That's what you call an identifying mark. Look, look at that tattoo down there. That someone, someone did you wrong, lady. Yeah. You got done wrong. I, that's, that's a refund right there. Like, I keep trying to talk Dan into having my name tattooed on his neck. But if he did, it would look better than that. <laughs> he doesn't even love me. You, also, you know, they're probably going to fingerprint you. This is this is like one of those those ideas like if if they don't read it, it, no ID, you can't identify me and if you can't identify me, you can't arrest me. Ha! Those yeah, are the gonna, rules. They're going to figure it out because then they're going to decide you're driving without a license. And they're going to arrest you and then they're going to fingerprint you. And then they're going to find out who you are. Have you noticed people these days, they're just kind of like looking for like these loopholes. Yeah. They're trying to like... <coughs> we have a word for this when, we play, when it talks to, our, to role playing games. It's called rules lawyering. Yeah. Where you're trying to find the way to get through the mechanics of the game to the best of your advantage or to undermine a situation the Dungeon Master has created. And people hate them. Because they're horrible. Yeah. And they ruin everything. But it doesn't work in the real world. You you can't negotiate your way out of being arrested by trying to find a loophole. It's not Grand Theft Auto. You can't just switch to a different car and lower your star rating. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's, that's not how it works. No, man, if I... If I spray paint the motherfucker, you can't arrest me. You won't even know. You won't even know. That's not how that works. Man, that neck tat is just making me sad. Does she even have a mouth? Yeah, kind of, I think. I don't think so. I think that's like her clavicle. Uh. And uh, But of all the places to put it, your vagina. Really? Yeah. I mean, well, she does have a biohazard symbol on her temple. They had to take her to the so hospital. warning. They had to take her to the hospital to get the fucker back out. That's that not shaped for that. No, it really isn't. There are things that are shaped to go in there. That's not one of them. Also, I want everybody who's watching right now, I want you to take out your driver's license or your state ID or whatever you have. And just, just run your finger along the edge of it. Just run your finger back and forth along the edge of it and see how uncomfortable that is for your finger. And now, I mean... Take not, the next step, everybody. Not everyone in the audience has labia. No. For those of you that do, you're already there. Yeah. For those of you that don't, I imagine the closest sensation would be imagine doing that to your balls. Okay, don't just... It's, it's, yeah, they had to take her to the hospital, get, they had an x-ray machine, which you can imagine the x-ray tech is going. We don't need you to get it out, Jim. Just read it for us. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this crazy lady? Yeah, it's her. All right, leave it alone. It's her problem now. Oh, shit. The last three stories are Florida. Florida. Holy crap. How did that happen? Easy on them. They just had a bad hurricane. How the crap did... Hey, guess what? Pull out the tick box again. Pull up the tally. Oh, okay. I'm told not the balls. The spot on the shaft just behind the crown would be the most sensitive spot you could yeah. rub the edge of that driver's license on. Thank you, because I don't have a penis, so... Chaos at Chuck E. Cheese. Parents oh, throw God. punches, kick and pull each other's hair during a mass brawl at a children's birthday party. Why does this always fucking happen? Footage has emerged of a major brawl that broke out between parents inside a Florida Chuck E. Cheese during a children's birthday party. The fight involved a large group of mothers and fathers who were seen in the cell phone video hitting 
kicking and pulling each other's hair. I, we've got to play this. I've got to play. We've got to see what the fuck's going on here. Holy what? shit! Why, like, once a month at a Chuck E. Cheese, does it turn into that scene from the church in the Kingsman? <laughs> You're taking your kids to have pizza, swim in a contaminated ball pit, play some games for some shitty prizes. I don't understand how that turns into a brawl. The whole place is just fucking whooping each other's ass. Like, are they putting fucking T-virus in... The pizza doesn't seem to be affecting the children. Are they owned by the Umbrella Corporation? I just, it. Why in the? You know the biker fight in Chico. It was the mom. <laughs> Did you catch that? Yes. <laughs> but we seriously, we've done this story like five times now. Really? Yeah. There's always a fucking brawl. There's the something TV. going on at the Chuck E. Cheese. I, I'm working on it. I think Umbrella Corporation owns Chuck E. Cheese. And this is their fucking... They're doing something at the Chuck E. Cheese. They are. Because we're not... something up there. They're testing some shit. Because people don't get in fights this much at Dave and & Buster's. And that's made for the grown-ups. People don't get in fights this much in bars. <laughs> They're, they're doing five fights at Chucky's. That's nice, Gabe. That's nice. I'm telling you, like, they're testing the rage virus that will call the population, and all those people are going to wind up in the FEMA death camps. There's your conspiracy theory. I... You, you, and you're doing it. This is like... The kid is going to remember this birthday and not well. Yeah. You know what? When I was 10 years old... I had a birthday party at Showbiz Pizza. You remember Showbiz Pizza with the Billy Bob and, and No, but you've shown video of it and it's horrifying. Yeah. I had a Showbiz Pizza and I got a Rodimus Prime for my birthday. It's a transformer. I got Rodimus Prime and we had what? <clears throat> Rodimus Prime. Is that like the porn bot? No, it's Rodimus Prime. Erodimus Prime. Rodimus Prime. Okay, that's not better. <laughs> Does it transform into a dildo? No, it transforms it. It transforms into a Winnebago. I'm not kidding. It transforms into a Winnebago. It should definitely transform into a giant dildo. That's all I'm saying. And I got my transformer, and we had pizza, and there's robots was singing to me, and I had video games, and it was fun. What nobody going all Super Smash Brothers in the really <laughs> real world. Like I hate to tell you what my 10th birthday party was. It, it, Did you just it was, do the purge or something? Your, your it, stories are horrible. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was a Statue of Liberty themed party because I was really into the Statue of Liberty as a kid. And I dressed up. Yeah. I did my hair in banana curls and wore a mint green bed treat and the clamp crown. And my sister Carrie sculpted a Statue of Liberty head out of mint chip ice cream and sugar cones. And we played Pin the Torch on the statue, and it was the dorkiest shit ever. She's all mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off the market, gents. I'm taken. I'm sorry. Yeah. Our last one is Florida. Ha have you heard this thing in, I think it's like motivational for companies or whatnot, where they call, where they do the yes and they, they tell you, stop saying no, but, and start saying yes, and. Oh. To just be open to every possibility, yes, and. Ugh. As someone who works in the, ser in the customer service industry, go fuck yourself. Yeah. With that theory. Well, this guy took the yes, and to a whole new place. Whole new place. And you'll even note, even the smoking gun was given pause. Just look at this headline. On this day, peak Florida has been reached. <laughs> Try to follow along here. This is amazing. In a scene deserving of a yakety sack score, a 350-pound Florida man 
ran from Walmart with two stolen TVs, but his getaway was compromised when his pants, containing his ID, fell off as he ran away. According to cops of yesterday, I apprehended the suspect who had a crack pipe stuffed with Brillo buried in his anus. That's some Mad Libs shit. What just happened? How do you run away and leave your pants behind? According to court complaints, Columbus Henderson fled from a Walmart supercenter in Fort Lauderdale with a pair of 40-inch televisions. Henderson, seen it right, bolted with the merchandise after he allowed a cashier to scan the $298 items. So wait, what? We went through the checkout. We <laughs> went through the checkout. I mean, nice of you to not want to fuck up their inventory, I guess. As he scooted through the parking lot, the forty-five-year-old Henderson's pants fell off as he ran away. It appears after Henderson's pants fell to his ankles, he proceeded to run right out of the garment. How? Have you ever tried to take your pants off with your shoes on? Yes, it doesn't work. Fuck, half the time I can't get my pants off with my shoes off. <laughs> Hi, Peggy. No, you can't have my straw. Thank you. Get well, out of the sink. Police later determined that Anderson's abandoned pants contained the suspect's identification. The entire incident was captured on video. It took cops about a week to catch up with Henderson, who was nabbed early Tuesday morning for grand theft of felony. With a crack pipe full of steel wool. Why would you put steel wool in a crack pipe up your ass? Upon arriving, upon arriving at the Pinellas County Jail, Henderson informed officers he had a crack pipe concealed in his anus. When officers removed him from the vehicle, the defendant had removed the crack pipe from his anus and dropped it on the ground. Glass pipe was recovered. The lawyer reported it was stuffed with steel wool and had burn marks on one end. I, like, I'm... is that just in case the crack pipe breaks in there and the glass won't hurt enough? <laughs> so you have to fill it with steel wool just to drive it home? No pun intended. I just... I just... What happened, man? Somebody in the channel meant to type at least his ID wasn't up his butt, but they didn't capitalize it. So I read it as at least his id wasn't up his butt. And I'm like, I kind of think it was. <laughs> it's like, OK. You know what the term in media res means, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like. You need a record scratch and you're probably asking yourself, <laughs> how did I wind up in this situation? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's so like, we're just, it, oh my God. I, I'm still working on how he ran out of his pants. <laughs> that's the one that's hanging, that's the one that's got you hung up. Not how. It's fucking impossible. Not how he was running with two 40 inch televisions. Not how he that was. That I don't find inconceivable because my dad used to routinely walk around with multiple sh Walk. Sheets of sheetrock. Walk, not run. Not only was he running with the. Not only did he run them through the cat. Not only did he go through the checkout. He went to the cashier. <laughs> no, I'd like to steal these today. <laughs> okay. Is it? Whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> I'm. I'm sorry. What did you? Bye, yo. Yeah. Three seconds of surprise. Yes, I know they only weigh about 20 pounds each, but they are awkward. Yeah, they're cumbersome. It's not so much about the weight. It's about... It's about the trying to grasp. It's not easy to maneuver with. And yeah. it really fucks up your aerodynamics. I'm trying to run with... You have to... I just can't imagine what's and going... And you're also running out of your pants. <laughs> I can't imagine. He's like, with oh. the crack pipe up your ass. So you're running like a duck and yet also like a penguin. You know what? This is a great idea. It's working fine. I'm fully committed. No regrets. I'm good with this. He said, I'm good. Cartoon. This is fine. This is fine. This, this is, is fine. fine. This is fine. I don't even know what we learned from that one. Well, maybe we've learned. Don't put steel wool up your butt.
Don't put anything up your, well, if you're inclined to put things up your butt for fun, that's fine. But put things that are designed for that purpose up your butt. Steel wool is not designed for your Don't butt. Don't just shove anything up your butt. We learned there is something nefarious going on at the Chuck E. Cheese. God damn right there is. There is something. There's the some. Is out there. There's some dark Illuminati confluence Necronomicon old ones bullshit going on at Chuck E. Cheese. It's definitely where they're doing the human sacrifices. Something's going on at the Chuck E. Cheese. We've learned that, no, just because they can't find your ID... Doesn't mean they can't arrest you. Doesn't mean you win the game. It's not, yeah, you're not, you're not, you haven't out, you, the only person you've outsmarted is yourself. Yeah. We've learned you really. And your ID's gonna smell like that forever. We've learned that you really maybe don't want God on your side so much. You don't want God to take a personal you interest. You on your side. You just don't want him. You take, don't want him taking too strong an interest in you. You don't want God micromanaging. Yeah, you want God like you got to think of God like your regional manager. Right. Like you want him to like you. But you don't want him to be all up in you your shit. You don't want him to remember your name. When yeah. You yeah. You know. You want him to look at you and go, "Oh yeah, I like that guy." You don't want him to know your name. We've learned that if you're trying to run a clandestine illegal operation. Maybe a hot pink sign outside announcing you're attempting to be covert. Yeah. Not the best plan. Hot pink, for fuck's sake. Well, I had to make sure the snitches saw it. Hot pink. And finally, we've learned that you can just walk into an Apple store and fuck shit up and you're fine. I mean, probably not. You probably got arrested. Yeah, you probably shouldn't try it. You should try it. You probably shouldn't do that. You should totally. You should probably not do that. Go do it. No, don't do it. Do it. That's a bad idea. I encourage this. I don't encourage this at all. You really should. I don't. You know, if if the whole audience gets arrested, you're going to lose a lot of ad revenue. Or, or, going to pick up a whole new demographic in lockup. 